you cannot afford to miss a single moment of the next hour. Get ready to have your ideas about sexuality, love, and relationships blown wide open. It's time to get educated, entertained, and enlightened, as well as sexually empowered. You have now tuned into the Tantra Love Sex and Intimacy Show. Now, here's your host, Tanya Diamond. Hello, everybody. And, you know, nobody made me laugh for this one. So what's up with that? I was going to, like, poke you in the arm or something. Be like, poke, poke, poke. And, no, and then don't. see, that wasn't going to. That's why I decided That's not to do it. going to make me laugh? It was that last second thing. You know, I didn't want to say anything <laughs> on the microphones while the intro was going. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you know I, I don't know. That, that can be okay. All right. It's uh, another sunny day in Seattle. It was a beautiful day. Of course, it's not a day right now. It's right. It's a day. Uh, so everybody else is getting all the crappy weather and we're getting all the fabulous, fabulous weather that uh, we don't tell anybody about, except I just did or something like that anyway. It rains all the time. Yeah, right. It rains all the time, clearly. Uh, we are in the studio today with one of my favorite people and his name is Ratziel Bambler. Hello, Ratziel. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. And... Um, why is he one of my favorite people? I don't know why. <laughs> Other than that amazing voice, and he's drop dead handsome, and we know how I like handsome men. I uh, love him because he teaches an amazing movement, a form of rejuvenation called Shintao. Yeah. And yes, and what would you like to tell us about Shintao, Ratzel? I don't know. What would you like to know? Shintao is uh, a regenerative and rejuvenative technique. And for all you Tantra fans, it uh, is going to increase your inner fire in an effortless way, make you more subtle, supple, make supple. you more... <laughs> <laughs> Not more subtle? More subtle and supple? <laughs> well, you do get pretty subtle, but, and it'll also help you experience more of the pleasure of... Uh, existence oh the pleasure of existence we are definitely all about the pleasure of existence and uh do we have to turn ourselves into pretzels to do this no 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 it's probably the easiest uh form of exercise that uh, i've ever come across and that possibly that exists it's just fluid natural movement you can just learn it in a day and take it away and practice by yourself and discover you know they're very simple exercises but the the depth of them keeps unfolding year after year that's kind of like tantra you know you can start doing the breath work and start doing some tantric practices and as you become more and more proficient as you uh, become deeper you see you learn more and more about yourself and the practice shintao is the same way yeah, and Shintao is really, I'd sort of call it a natural form of Tantra because uh, we don't try and deliberately move energy or, you know, configure the body into certain things or work the breath in a very intentional way. What we basically do is try and reawaken, and we can do that very quickly, uh, natural movements, natural flow of breath, natural uh approaches to the body similar to the way we used to operate when we were babies yes and that is more effortless so how did how did you come to know this how did you come to learn this what's the what's the story that you tell us a million times but are going to tell us again <laughs> oh my god you have to tell the story maybe you could tell it a different way <laughs> which way can i tell it this time i don't know um I guess it's just a, a, a fateful story. I was uh, Shintao is a, a, a technique that was kept secret uh, to a very small clique, uh, basically, at the Shaolin Monastery until probably the 40s, uh, 1920s, actually. Probably by the 60s, it had completely disappeared from China. But for centuries, it was only ever handed down to a maybe a handful of people per generation. And it just so happened that it was uh, my journey to be sought out and told that it was my job to learn this technique and take it and disseminate it to the world. And uh, basically that's what happened. I was very ill at the time, and that was my big uh, trigger point 
to need some sort of technique that was so gentle and yet so effective that I could still do it and uh, it would start to improve my condition, which was actually a, an irreversible syndrome, a syndrome that sees the body go into rapid decline, decline that takes you really, you end in a wheelchair. Uh, and I was getting pretty close to that stage when I was uh, approached and offered the opportunity of learning this technique, which I was told would um, cure my condition. I was very disbelieving, very cynical at the time, but I've had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of experience from probably about the age of 14 uh, through to uh, middle age. <laughs> <laughs> and so I recognized there was a great opportunity there and a lot of value in this beautiful technique. It's, it's something that really is exquisite. It not only, not only looks exquisite, it feels exquisite, uh, takes you into a, a state of ecstasy and exquisite beauty just feeling your own self feels extremely beautiful when you're doing shintao and so i learned this technique i was miraculously healed i function very much as a normal person now <laughs> and i started teaching it around the world and discovered through teaching it as I was instructed to do, that the breadth of these techniques, the healing capacity, not only for the body, but for the mind and the emotions, was enormous and as varied as the people to whom I taught it. Well, I think that if Chantal can uh, give me the energy to have a smooth voice, like that, because if you ever watch Ratziel move, he moves <laughs> like he sounds silky, smooth, just this fluid motion, like watching water uh, pour. Well, that's very nice to hear because before I learned Shinto, I was really, uh, I'd say, I was walking for two weeks out of four and walking with a walking stick and. For the other two weeks, I was totally incapacitated on my back and in terrible pain. So to hear you say that is uh, quite amazing. But everything about Shintao and I guess most about my life since I've learnt uh, the technique has been quite miraculous. Well, I think that, um, and I know from personal experience myself, after working with Shintao, I have a neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, and I have not been able to, had not been able to um, stand on my toes or balance and do any type of martial arts for quite a long time, probably eight years. And uh, after interviewing you the first time, um, which I think was last year at some point, um, <clears throat> after interviewing you and starting to, I uh, got the, your, your DVD and started to do the practices at home, within a few weeks... Uh, I was able to stand on my toes for the first time in years, and I have something that's supposed to be declining, not getting better. And um, a few months after that, I was at a workshop um, on a beach. I was teaching a workshop, and in the morning I got up and went to the beach, and the beach was on a pretty good incline, and I'm wearing negative heel boots, earth shoes, and I started to do some shintao on the beach, even though it was like that, went from some Shintao to some martial arts kicking and everything else, maintained my balance, back to Shintao. And when I came up later uh, to breakfast, I had people walking up to me saying, I have never seen anything more beautiful than you moving on the beach this morning. It looked like the universe emanated from you. So this is what Shintao can do for you. And much more. I think that's only the beginning of it, although... If that's all Shintao did, it would be more <laughs> be a than miracle enough, anyway, right? You know? <laughs> exactly. But if one can muster the discipline to be persistent with it, it really releases your potential. I've seen people become better at business, people become better at sports, people become better at arts, people become more spiritually inclined, and those spiritually inclined people 
discover an unfathomable depth to themselves in a very, uh, well, a remarkably short time. In fact, people automatically, without even desiring to, go into meditation with Shintao in a very deep and profound way, a way that's, uh, we wouldn't even discuss it as meditation. I never discuss meditation, but it's an automatic part of the process. You see, Shintao is taking into, in, you into your natural potential. And our natural potential is really being in tune with our innermost basic self. And that basic self is, uh, just by I- existence of it, it's a divine self. And if we can come in touch with that, the world becomes pleasurable. If we do become in touch with that, the world flows in a different way. Energy feels like it's flowing through the body. We don't have to direct it. The central core energy is automatically uh, reinforced, made strong. So our performance in every aspect of life is improved. Our brain becomes energized. So it can function in a much better way. It can control aspects of our physical and non-physical self in a way that we're not really used to. In fact, if you keep going, we actually begin to feel where the brain is operating from, and we can actually control from which part of the brain we're working at a particular time. We can feel where different thoughts emanate from and uh, trigger responses in the brain. It really takes you to a different level of yourself. In fact, Shintao means the way of the gods, and in a more literal translation, it means the way of the men in the mountains. Because the small group of people that perpetuated and guarded this secret technique lived in the mountains. and When I was taught it, I also lived in the mountains, which was a bit of a coincidence. (laughs) But uh, it's the way of the men in the mountains slash the way of the gods. So it really means it's the way of these humans, the path of these humans who, through this very simple technique, can effectively and speedily take themselves to a state where they are considered to be like gods. They can muster sort of superhuman energies. And those energies are healing energies. They're divine energies. And, you know, we get confused in life about pleasure and bliss. We, all of us, seek that divine pleasure, the pleasure which is really our birthright. And because of stress and expectations and social conditioning, we're usually tricked out of our innate pleasure. So the ecstasy and pleasure that we witness in young babies and little children is very quickly trampled out of us to be replaced by stress and debilitation. But if we take ourselves back to our natural state, our natural connection with our divine self, it is a different type of pleasure. Although we're always seeking that pleasure, we, get, we f- mistake physical pleasure for the divine pleasure. And physical pleasure is a perfectly legitimate way of reminding ourselves that the world and our physical state is a beautiful, extraordinary thing experience. The trick being that as we mature, we need to begin to discriminate between mere physical pleasure and the absolute pleasure of being. And it's that pleasure of being that I'm very interested in awakening in myself and other people if they so desire. It's that absolute pleasure of being that comes from no stimulation that is our birthright, that propels our lives onto a new level and our understanding becomes something beyond the physical world. And suddenly we become more than just mere 
animalistic humans, we reach toward the divine state. We reach toward the state of being like gods. And of course, the uh, alchemists and the hermeticists of old used to say that if we want to know God, we need to become like God because like attracts like. Well, and as hypnotic and absolutely breathtakingly beautiful as that uh, was, I was in trance just sitting here like, oh, this is just a, enjoying the, this is just so the state of listening. delicious. <laughs> That's all I have to say. And I have to say that doing Shintao and learning Shintao is that delicious as well. And I was drawn to this. It was kind of a, it was a fate thing, much like destiny thing, much like Ratzel was talking about how he learned about Shintao. Uh, my, one of my teachers so long ago told me there was a piece of movement. <clears throat> there was a technique that I needed to learn for my piece of my puzzle. And I have spent um, 15 or more years searching for this particular thing to the point where I have tried just about everything there is out there, uh, Qigong, every martial art, uh, every dance move, every yoga pose, <clears throat> pretty well have tried all of it, searching for that piece that completed something for me. And um, happened to read something about Ratzel coming for a workshop, uh, must have gone out to uh, Contact Talk Radio or something, and uh, following my intuition like I do, I knew immediately I needed him in the studio. Um, his uh, scheduler said he didn't have time, and I said, great, I'll see him at 1 o'clock on Thursday. And <laughs> lo and behold, <clears throat> they were here. I actually asked him to do the movement in the studio, which, of course, was really funny because nobody was going to see it, but I was giving my feeling about it, and I was overwhelmed just watching him, just feeling the energy coming off of Ratzel while he performed some of the movements was unbelievable. And I knew without a doubt that this was the piece of the puzzle that I had been looking for. And with my tantric practice, uh, breathwork and Shin Tao are the two things that I do. Those are the two things that I uh, believe are responsible for being able to bring both physical and this divine pleasure that Ratzel so eloquently was just talking about to us, and most of us have no idea uh, the state that we can achieve and the states that we can live in. Um, and um, of course, you don't know what you don't know. But we're hoping here, while we're talking about this, that we will help to open up your mind about some other things. And the beauty of Shintao is its simplicity. And that's much like the beauty of Tantra when you boil it down to its most simplest component. So, Ratziel, that, of course, you know, you know, I just adore you. And the uh, the mm -hmm. energy that comes off of you and your teaching, I, I got to take a, I took a workshop from you last year. It was um, life-changing. Um, so even the DVD was amazing, and then the workshop itself was uh, quite life-changing. Life and you are here in the studio because you are here in Seattle. Yep. And I'm looking right here um, at your calendar. And... Uh, this weekend is the 30th, and it looks like you have your basic workshop from uh, 10 to 5 on Saturday. That's correct, yep. And uh, For beginners. For beginners. And that you also um, have, let's see, have you already done, you, looks like you've done your speaking events already. Yeah, yes. I gave a couple of talks at uh, a couple of bookshops, I think. Yep, so... We're getting you here at the end of end of your tour. So this Saturday, the 30th, 10 to 5, the basic Shintao workshop. And do you still have uh, places available? I think there are some places available. If you, uh, if anybody's interested in inquiring, you'd uh, contact Ailey Welch. And her phone number is 206-910-9766. And she'll be able to let you know and... Uh, make the necessary arrangements. Okay, and that's going to be in Seattle. And if you missed that, that was 206-910-9766. And that's Ailey's phone number, and she is doing the coordinating for the workshop. So if you're here in Seattle, you definitely, definitely want to uh, get to this. If you uh, missed um, 
how to do that, you can always drop me an email. And of course, if you missed how to do that, you're going to miss how to drop me an email too. <laughs> <laughs> since we're since we're right here now, Joshua, you're going to go. Uh, it, part of mandatory for Team Tantra is actually learning Shintao. Be there or be square. That's right. And so we have um, mm-hmm. you and Chris, mm-hmm. I believe, are attending the workshop this weekend. So what have you heard from me and Max uh, so far about this our adventure so far with Shintao? You better do it or you're out. <laughs> well, other than that. <laughs> oh, other than that. Uh, Tanya has been sharing so much about this since I first joined uh, Team Tantra and LearningTantra.com. And uh, I think actually the first time, not the first time I met you, but the first time I came to to headquarters, you said, oh, you've got to check this out. And you put the DVD in, and right there we both immediately started doing Shintao. And, you know, you're like, you know, just try to do your best on the first round. And, and it was so natural to to begin and to feel right away um, when when we stopped trying to breathe and just let the movements cause breath. And very easily moving into a very calm state of mind mm-hmm. and feeling how the body wants to move in these ways and, and just... Uh, how gentle and relaxing and at the same time powerful, feeling feeling the energy. You know, I've done kundalini yoga uh, a few times. I've, you know, I've studied a number of different things in my life. And, you know, just to be able to do these very gentle and, and basic movements uh, and feel that deep was phenomenal. You know, I've, I've heard from you about the changes it's made in, in your body and your health and your awareness. Um as well, you know, as we're we're the desire to learn more about all these wisdoms in the in the tantric world, you know, as as a guy being mission driven, how can I learn more? How can I increase my energy? How can I feel more uh, subtle stuff? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and realizing here, do this. And I've studied enough to 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 know not to say, but how do I do it quickly? <laughs> do this. Um, it's really interesting to get an opportunity to feel directly. Um, the emotional and the spiritual and the physical benefit from doing something so simple yet so powerful. And what's interesting is that uh, that happened to you the first time you practiced Absolutely. it. And this is a really fascinating thing. You don't have to perfect Chin Tao. You don't even have to get it right. For some mysterious reason, it just works for you. And we can feel the effects the very first time, which is really uh, unparalleled in any other technique. And I just want to reaffirm this for the listeners, that if you do want to learn Shintao, if you take that on, you don't have to give anything else up. In fact, it improves all your other techniques. I've had martial arts experts come to me, kung fu and uh, uh, qigong experts, tai chi experts, people who've practiced with the great masters and practiced for 30 years and more. And these people come to me, uh, usually starting off fairly cynical. By the end of the day, by the end of the workshop, they go away with a whole new approach and invariably they come back to me and say, I've never experienced such a depth in my practice of martial arts before. The Shintao, after only one or two days of practice, opens a new door, something they've been looking for all their lives. So this is really what you're talking about too. Mm -hmm. Shintao is a natural tantra. It's something that opens the doorways. So if you want to guide it in different directions, you want to guide your own inner potential in different directions, it really helps you open the door. You don't have to give anything up for Shintao. It's a great augmentation for any aspect of your life. We love that about that. And uh, I do believe that like Tantra, Shintao, to me, Shintao is the Tantra. That's the Tantra of movement that I use in my practice. And we do teach Tantra for life mastery and Shintao does open these doors and these places that you may be trying to open through sitting hours at Zen or doing all these other things. And reality is 
most of the people, like I saw several people in the workshop uh, that I went to that had, you know, the correct posture and the, um, you know, the iron gaze and the, all of the things that they were doing so rigidly right. And it was very interesting to watch Ratziel take a big stick of wood and beat the man over the head. <laughs> <laughs> Calm Ratziel in his silken move <laughs> with a big stick of wood. You will relax. <laughs> no, he didn't actually yeah. beat the man. Um, but uh, he, <laughs> this poor guy was doing it so right. You know, he had studied for years learning how to be so tense and so rigidly upright and so perfection oriented in his rigidity. And it was really an unwinding, an unwinding for him to let go of that chronic tension that wasn't allowing him to move anywhere. And that was some of the beauty of this is that it wasn't about being perfect. It isn't about, uh, getting it all right it's about letting go as Ratziel loves to say yeah letting go and you know unlearning a lot of stuff because we we really teach ourselves into a corner Uh, we we take ourselves so far away from our natural state of being that we really have to start working very hard to try and get back there now if we can tap into that natural state Suddenly, for example, you know, the yogis in the room don't have to try to sit up straight anymore. The energy that flows naturally makes the body sit in a perfect posture without trying, without effort of any sort. And it's so with the rest of life. If we can tune into, if we can tap that unfathomable resource, which is actually our own inner being, Life itself takes on a different hue. It changes. This idea that we hear very frequently about surrender, it's such a conscious and difficult concept. But if everything is flowing, we don't need to surrender. If we're in touch with the depth of our own being, there's nothing to surrender to. We become part of that flow. And we might notice parts of our aspects of our psychology, of our belief system, trying to interfere, trying to get in the way, trying to make obstacles, trying to be independent from the universal flow of things, the flow that's trying to look after us, to place our lives in the right perspective, to bring us the things we need for our own benefit and our own growth. And we may notice these Uh, apparent blocks but they don't affect us anymore because we're in touch with ourselves we're in touch with the universal flow we become something different and life changes I don't know really how to express it because many people come to the workshop and they don't know what they're going to experience even talking about it is a very vague approximation of what you might experience. When we do become in touch with that place, when we start to experience it, it it's quite a revelation. It's, it's a little bit of a shock sometimes. And it really challenges our inner concepts. So the way I teach is not only to show you movements, but we work very potently on deconstructing Uh, concepts and inner beliefs and patterns of thought that may interfere with you allowing yourself to become in touch with yourself. And it's that deconstruction of concepts that is possibly the most difficult part of the workshop. It's deconstructing the concepts and learning how not to make an effort are the most difficult things we learn all day. I know, and that's why the guy got the stick. (laughs) He was absolutely, doggedly, doggedly trying to hang on to his learning of being a great student and showing up and working really hard at doing it right. And that's definitely something in Shintao you don't do. You don't work 
really hard at getting it right. You work really hard <coughs> at letting go. And we are going to take a quick break here. And uh, we'll come back in just a few moments and learn more about Chantal and what it can do for you. We'll talk back in a few moments. I'm too sexy for your party, too sexy for your party, the way I'm disco dancing. I'm a model, you know what I mean, and I do my little turn on the girl. Are you one of the 40 million sexless couples in the U.S.? Are you wondering why having sex leaves you feeling lonely? Are you suffering from the myths of sexual dysfunction? Do you know in your heart that there has to be more than what you're currently getting out of making love? To rid yourself of sexual ignorance, get more out of your lovemaking, and find out more about spiritual sexual connection, then you need to check out www.thetantraTeacher.com to receive your free copy of the ebook called Secrets of the Tantra Teacher. Don't suffer another minute without the sexual loving and ecstatic bliss you were born to receive. Get to www.thetantraTeacher.com right now. That's www.thetantraTeacher.com. Did you know that you can rate this show on iTunes? The show you're listening to right now. It's true. You can leave your thoughts about the show, the topic, the guest. You can even leave a suggestion. Then before you leave, rate the show. The hosts love hearing from you, so next time you download this show from iTunes, leave your thoughts and rate the show for the host and for others. Is your sex life non-existent? Do sexual dysfunctions leave you soft? Is internet porn getting more than you are? Or are you paying more attention to porn than your partner? Have you tried talk therapy and it got you nowhere? You are not alone. You can be freed from sexual shame, guilt, and dissatisfaction. A visit to the Tantra Teacher is in order. Call now and mention you heard the Tantra Teacher on the radio and get a very special offer. Stop waiting for a miracle and call right now. 206-276-2735. Phone consultations or in person will get you the information you need to be successful in your love life. But you have to call now. 206-276-2735. Stop making excuses. Call the Tantra teacher. 206-276-2735. I'm too sexy for your party. Too sexy for your party. The way I'm disco dancing. I'm a <laughs> Yeah, nobody's too sexy. For Shintao. Shintao is for everyone. That's right. So no matter how sexy they are. We are, we are back, and we are talking to Ratsil Bandler at Shintao.com, and that's H-S-I-N-T-A-O.com, and uh, about Shintao, and that is a rejuvenation technique, a movement that is so beautiful and so incredible in its healing properties and its life-transforming um just life transformation and what it does. I, I think it's one of the um, the things that absolutely everybody, except if you're under 21, apparently, uh, everybody should be, what? it should, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, uh, sh- it should be, this should be a part of everybody's life. This should be some uh, something that is definitely taught and people should know. There's a lot of people out there attempting to reach spiritual enlightenment by a lot of very um, harsh or hard or, um, difficult and grueling and painful things. And uh, that's cool if that's what you like. But if that's not what you're into, uh, Shintao is definitely more the answer. And uh, Shintao is not only great for, I mean, it's done a, a amazing things for my physical body and healing for things with me that supposedly are incurable. So I have my own testimony about that. But um, Ratzel, you you also, I mean, you've been teaching for quite a while, and you have a huge long list of people that have uh, come to you and come to the workshops and been amazed at what it's done for their bodies. Yeah, the list is actually too long to even remember. Um, <laughs> just a few, just a now. few highlights. <laughs> well, you know, it, it works individually for every uh, person. It's as if it's a tailor-made. Uh, it's a tailor-made movement, actually. We don't really know why it 
it works. It's a little bit of a miracle. That's why I, I called the book and the DVD that uh, we put out about it, The Miracle of Shintao. But, you know, for example, I got a, an email one day from a client in London and she had not been able to really walk about or use her arms for, I don't know, about six or eight months. She was a she was attacked with rheumatoid arthritis and her bones just sort of twisted very quickly and she was just in constant pain. And after practicing for, I don't know, it was about six weeks she practiced and she went for a long walk in the park for the first time in, it was almost a year, and she was just overjoyed that suddenly she could walk again. Of course, about two years later, she's still practicing and her twisted hand started to to straighten out and she could start using her hands again. And mm. uh, and people actually looking at her hands now don't know that she's still got rheumatoid arthritis. So she improved to such an extraordinary extent. We've had people report that asthma has been completely eradicated from their lives. Other people who've been stricken by uh, debilitation from when they were children, unable to walk uh, properly, uh, have been able to walk walk again. Uh, and I'm not talking about uh, particularly young people. I'm talking about mature people who've spent 50 or 60 years uh, unable to stand without pain and unable to walk. And suddenly after practicing for some months, they find themselves getting up and walking around. And it's amazing to them it's amazing to me to watch depression lyme disease uh the the list really goes on and on and for myself it was post polio syndrome which is a combination of so many problems including uh you know muscle at atrophy and and neurological problems and uh, immune system problems it's I've seen so many people, I've got to say, I really can't remember the whole gamut of things. <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's a lot, and I think, you, well, the story of it, isn't the story of it is that um, somebody sat down, a monk sat down to meditate, and he did this for so long that he was couldn't get up again. And yeah. So when, he started when, moving. When he came out of his long meditation, he was almost crippled. So he started creating movements in his enlightened state that would bring the body back in back to life would regenerate the body bring the mind back into presence and fill himself once again with spirit in his body because he was uh i guess pretty out of it by that <laughs> 80 years of meditation later <laughs> so <laughs> was nine he's supposed to have sat for nine years okay. un uninterrupted in meditation and wow. these are the movements which uh we now call Shintao. These are the movements which were kept a strict secret because of their incredible potency and their ability to not only heal, but to generate uh, the body's natural energy. So it's not just a healer of physical disease, although that's the way we got many people to come and try Shintao because it very quickly developed a reputation as uh, curing or easing disease or augmenting a person's natural health uh, but it does many more things it it really is a deep spiritual exercise unintentionally and we don't need to even have the slightest spiritual bent to find those benefits but it also increases the basic energy of our body and ourselves so we usually interpret that energy as sexual energy so we found incredible uh, potency, increase in potency in men, lubrication in women, particularly postmenopausal women, find lubrication coming back, uh, and it's, it's a mystery to them, but a joyful one, I guess. Life force energy, sexual we, vitality returning to the body. We used to, I, I had somebody who made... Um, uh, some posters at one stage which sort of said moisturize from within <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what Shintao does it lubricates from within it also in increases our ability uh, in terms of actual 
you know, sexual relations. The the whole thing is improved without trying. Our ability to uh, perform as a male, the uh, slowing down of uh, you know the time it takes to ejaculate, and in many cases not needing to ejaculate at all, uh, and many other associated uh, effects come naturally from Shintao. In fact, we sometimes have to warn against the uh, very rapid increase in libido that comes about, and we suggest that people don't go out and spend all that energy all in one go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Supercharge your life with Shintao in the sexual arena. So then it's good to have some of our uh, tantric knowledge if uh, you're going to be turned loose with Shintao uh, <laughs> so you actually know what to do with all of that amazing energy that uh, comes from the body. And uh, I had said, I believe I said, uh, I don't know if I said on the radio or not, but yes, under 21, if you're under 21, this is not. Why? Why Do you know why that is, Raziel? Oh, look, it's because we're, because of the way I teach it, actually. I'm, I'm rather um, candid, and we do contact, uh, you know, a lot of areas uh, that that are our center, which are the sexual centers in the body, and uh, you know, we just like to keep it as okay, so legal as possible. If you are under twenty one and you want to come to a workshop, all you need is a a written permission from your guardian and uh, excellent. We're not, they're not naked in class. They're not touching themselves in class. That's not what we're talking about. I'm just talking about things and I'm not a medical person, so I don't really Mm -hmm. have that license. Right. So this is, that's just a legality. So they're not going to do you any harm to get the book or the DVD if you're (laughs) under 21 (laughs) and actually practice. Awesome. Because I was always wondering about that. I was thinking, Oh, I can't teach my daughter this for that long. (laughs) <laughs> and I didn't know if it had something to do with DNA restructuring uh, because of uh, what this actually does. No, in fact, the earlier you learn it, the uh, more effectively you're going to slow down the aging process. Incredible, cool. If you can master it by before you're 60, I mean truly master it, be, it becomes a part of your whole existence, uh, the, the decline that sets in in the second cycle of life uh, which we regard as starting from 60 years of age, is greatly diminished and sometimes reversed. So Shinta practitioners usually, if they can master it early enough, enjoy a very vigorous and long uh, uh, senior years. We like that because there's nothing worse than living for 15 or 20 years having other people have to do everything for you. That's uh, probably not how most of us want to spend the last of our years. So Shintao rejuvenates, invigorates, lubricates. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds strange, but it does do that. (laughs) It's the bomb. And uh, (laughs) I I think that, that, uh, you know, the world all around is is going to be now... you are very particular. You are so far the only one. Do you have anybody else teaching, or you are so far the only one? I've uh, I've qualified one teacher who teaches the basic workshop in Europe, but uh, that's all at the moment. Okay, so if you're in Europe, because I have listeners all over the world, if you're in Europe, you can still go to shintao.com and uh, contact you, and you'll put them in touch with somebody Yes, absolutely. Uh, you'll find a link there to a uh, European website, and uh, you can discover what's available over there. And awesome. of course, you can also also get the DVD, uh, which uh, you can play uh, all around the world. And uh, there is a book; it's only in two languages at the moment, English and German, which is available both sides of the Atlantic. And um, I found that the book was awesome. I found that I was able to uh, start the practices with the DVD and and the book, or just I had just started with the DVD, and then a friend bought the book and uh, looked through that as well. And I know that um, I came to the workshop already with some knowledge because I'd been working with the DVD. <clears throat> and so you can do that. So if you can't make it to a workshop, you can make it to the website, which is shintao.com, and that's H-S-I-N-T-A-O.com. 
and buy the book and the DVD or the book or the DVD online there. And it's something you definitely want to do. And especially if you're listening to this, and part of why you're listening to this show is because you want to know how to have a better relationship, how to have better sex life, how to increase your love, your intimacy, any of those things. Let me tell you, I'm the Tantra teacher. This is what I do. Okay. This is the movement. This is the technique. If you're going to learn any technique, this would be the one that I would encourage you to pick up. I think it's, it is completely life transforming. I've seen what it's done uh, with my fiance, Max as well. He had a big revelation as a martial artist and uh, going to the workshop and having to let go (laughs) was a really big thing for him. And he came away with some uh, amazing, amazing feelings and really uh, was inspired by the workshop as well. Russell, we have about uh, 10 minutes here. What, um, what would you like to talk about? You know, what, uh, I know you have to, you have to talk about these things all the time and talk about something that isn't Chantal. (laughs) Can you imagine what would that be like? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. What can we talk about? I'm pretty sort of focused on, well, it's not just Chantal. In fact, uh, we don't teach Chantal as much as I work with clients on a more personal and private basis in, in an ongoing uh, way, which is more comprehensive. I'm really interested in people improving their lives and coming closer to what I was speaking about before, that inner unfathomable depth, which is their true and divine self, which brings people to a state of peace and knowledge and understanding and also increases their love uh, I'm sort of more interested in divine love because I think that is what we all seek. That's one of our real core desires. And divine love, how would you, what do you think about that? I mean, what what does that look like for somebody who's going, oh, divine love, what? Well, you know, we've got to differentiate between love and affection. Love is a sort of universal thing that springs from uh, a limitless wellspring and it it knows no boundaries and it can be directed anywhere. Affection is what we start to feel for our partner, for our children, for our teacher, for our car. Or a house. <laughs> our, our hand brought, <laughs> brought a handbag or <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Particularly shoes. Uh, and that affection and uh, the attachment that comes from that affection is often mingled with love. But at a certain stage, we can go beyond the affection. We d- can discriminate between what is the love and what is the affection and attachment. And if we can take ourselves away from the attachment and the affection and see that clearly that is not unlimited, unrestricted love, our perspective changes. You know, attachment and affection bring with them a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're part of the swing, you know, the the swing that goes backwards and forwards in life. We have this uh, duality happening all the time. We get happy and we get sad. We get happy and sad. Affection and attachments to the things we apparently love are is part of this pain process, pain-pleasure process. And we really want to find a place where we can continually experience this pleasure of divine love without swinging into the negative all the time, without having to deal with issues about it all the time. So untapping this pleasurable, extraordinary experience, which is at the depth of us all and is actually all of our potential, uh, is one of the main goals that I see in life. And when we talk about spiritual goals or goals of finding fulfillment in life, if we, I often work with people to find what they're really talking about. What do you really want? Because behind every apparent desire or every apparent need is a deeper desire, a more authentic need. And the list goes on. Behind every need is another need. And so it goes 
to a more and more basic need until finally we find a core desire, a core need, which is usually something very simple and cannot be broken down any further. And usually this core need relates very strongly to the need for love. And if we try to find that love through affection, through attachment, it's, all, it's, it's a minefield. It's never satisfactory. But if we can attain a type of love that comes from nowhere and goes to everywhere, that we feel towards ourselves as well as towards God, towards the universe, towards our individual companions, that love is what brings true satisfaction. It what, it's what brings peace. It's the core and essence of enjoyment of life. And that's what I call divine love because it knows no boundaries. It occurs for no reason. And it is in unlimited supply in all of us. We just have to get out of the way <laughs> and let it happen. And this is when we are teaching Tantra of Self, and we're talking about filling our self cup, filling our own cup up before we actually go out and attempt to fill our cup from other people. This is what we're talking about with love. The ability to love oneself or the ability to experience love within oneself, actually, in such a way that you're not needing somebody else to validate that feeling. Because if you're out to get love from somebody, which is what most people are doing, you're right, it's not satisfying. It's never going to work out well because nobody can ever fill your own cup for you. In a relationship, I say each one brings their individual cup and then there's a relationship cup in the middle. You fill the relationship cup from your other cups. You can't do it the other way or everything runs dry. And this is part of why we're having so many problems. We've got three minutes left here, Ratzel. I want to thank you so very much. Thank you. And I want to um, say, so you um, you do private practice work via phone, and yes? Yes, I work with people all over the world, um, and we have an ongoing relationship, uh, so we don't need to see each other in person. Okay, so coaching programs with Ratzel, and uh, as for, for life learning divine love and and finding out what it is uh, in your life that you really have a calling to so really and, encompasses all of life and how to let go of all the things that are <laughs> in your way to finding yourself indeed because most of us just want to pile on more things to try to find that thing that is now becoming elusive under the pile of stuff. Yeah, it's a vicious <laughs> cycle. <laughs> so, you know, letting go, getting out of our way. You hear me talk about that a lot. And piling on more stuff onto stuff just creates that, if your foundation has holes in it, which it does if you don't have that experience and know about that, it will collapse upon you and bury, bury you. And that's where a lot of people are. With two minutes left to go, I want to say that Ratziel Bandler is in Seattle. He's teaching this weekend on Saturday from 10 to 5. The call number to call is 206-910-9766 to register for that class, 10 to 5 on Saturday. His website is www.shintao.com, which is H-S-I-N-T-A-O.com. Thanks so much, Ratzel. I really, really appreciated it. Thank you so very, very much. It's always my one of my favorite things to just listen to him talk. Absolutely. <laughs> and we, I, have a class in Vancouver this weekend, my men's sexual mastery, sexual vitality, all of that. Vancouver, uh, you can get to my website under Tantra Classes, and there are still uh, a few spots left to sign up for that. That's going to be a great class for you. We're going to have a lot of fun. I did the uh, the the spoke to the men's group last week. They you know it, they were great. They were on fire. They're ready to go and have a lot of this learning going on. Um, and I think, I think what what are we doing? So we've got yeah. If you have not got to learningtantra.com, dot com, if you have not gone there and signed up for your twenty free emails, your ebook, your MP three, and you know a whole lot more. You need to get there, and you need to do that soon because you're missing out on things like this and a whole lot more. Josh, thanks so much for hanging. 
Glad to hang. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will be back next week. And in the meantime, Shintao, everybody, go look it up and get the DVD. You have been listening to the Tantra Love, Sex, and Intimacy Show with your host, Tanya Diamond. Visit our website at www.tanyadiamond.com. That's T-A-N-J-A for more information on workshops and classes. Thank you.